Hi everyone, I've been putting off making this video and painting for a long time. I've been planning to make it for over a year. I even wrote some of the voiceover a year ago, but I didn't think I could get through recording it without crying back then. I'm past that stage now, so there won't be any crying in this video. But let's first talk about the painting and then about what happened. So I'm painting this swamp scene from central Finland. It's based on a few photos I've taken near our summer cottage. And my mom asked me to make her a swamp painting years ago, so I finally made her one for her birthday this year. I had a certain image in my head I wanted to paint. I remember this photo of our dog sitting by the edge of the pond in the swamp while we were picking cloud berries. It kind of looked like he was fishing in the pond. The only thing that was missing was a fishing rod in front of him. Since it's a swamp, he would sometimes start sinking in the moss and he'd basically be sitting in water and I had to help him up. Anyway, it's a peaceful scene I knew I wanted to paint and I used a few different photos for reference for the sketch so I'd get the opposite shore and the skyline in the painting too. And I absolutely wanted to include the big birdhouse as well. After finishing the sketch, I thought the skyline was a bit too high, so I cut out the background and then taped it a little lower on the watercolor paper. And then I used graphite transfer paper and a ballpoint pen to transfer the sketch. The ballpoint pen was a bit too much for this paper, or I pressed too hard, so I erased the transfer lightly with a kneaded eraser to make it less visible and erased the smudges too. After that I enforced the sketch with the corresponding watercolor pencils so I'd have a rough plan for the colors. And they either wouldn't show up as much under the painting or they'd blend in with the watercolor. I used both my Kotman pan watercolors and the tube watercolors I got from Home Hobby by 3L a while ago. I hadn't used the tube watercolors since the unboxing video I made and the leftover paints had of course dried in the mixing tray wells. So I just reactivated them with water. And I added a bit of white acrylic paint at the end for highlights. It would have been a good idea to mask off the lightest areas in the beginning and then paint an even blue wash over the pond. But I think my masking fluid may have come to its end. They apparently don't survive that long and I don't even know how many years I've had mine. I was pretty worried all through the painting right from the sketching stage that this would turn out to be a disaster that it would look so bad that I wouldn't have a birthday present for my mom and I wouldn't get a video out of this. But I've had that feeling enough times to know that I just need to continue painting and there will be a turning point eventually. And so there was with this painting too. Of course there are things that I could have done differently, but I'm happy with how it turned out. Okay, now we've covered the technical stuff, so I'll move on to what happened to our dog. He's been in a few of my videos here and there from the start of this channel, but not recently, because he passed away at the end of 2017. It was just a few weeks before he was turning 15. He was still with us for Christmas, but then got put to sleep the day before New Year's Eve. We were kind of prepared for it because he was old, but he had his good days and bad days. Christmas time had gone pretty well, he still wanted to go on long walks, so it felt really sudden. That day he didn't eat or drink water, he didn't want to go outside, and by the afternoon he couldn't really walk, he was falling down, he was breathing heavily, he seemed to be in pain. And my sister and mother took him to the vet while I stayed home with my niece and nephew. And the vet didn't think there was anything to do but put him to sleep. Of course, I'd still hoped he'd come back from the vet, but it was his time to go. 
As I said, he was about to turn 15, so he was around for a big part of my life. And it's taken time getting used to him being gone. I still think of him every day and sometimes talk to him in my head. Or even out loud. If you're going through a loss of some kind yourself right now, I want to read out this quote to you. I used to do post-crossing years ago. And someone once sent me a postcard where they had written this quote on the back. I was going through something in my life then too, and I taped a card on my closet door and kept it there for a long time, so I could see it every day. It's by Agatha Christie, and it says, I have sometimes been wildly, despairingly, acutely miserable, racked with sorrow, but through it all, I still know quite certainly that just to be alive is a grand thing. And speaking of Labrador Retrievers, which he was, I absolutely recommend the book Marley and Me if you have a Labrador. I saw the movie years ago on a plane and tried to hide the fact that I was crying watching it. But I read the book or listened to the audiobook actually the summer before this happened. And I was listening to it at night and when it got towards the end and Marley was getting ill, I cried myself to sleep. Even though our dog was still alive then. He died maybe six months after I read the book. He wasn't quite as bad as Marley, but he certainly terrorized the house when he was younger. He was a lot calmer the last few years though. I also wanted to mention something that happened after he passed away. He was cremated and last summer we took his ashes to the summer cottage and buried the urn under a tree near the house. And then afterwards my mom was by the lake and I went to tell her something and in a while we heard a loud crash from the house. It's on a hillside so we were both down by the lake and the noise came from up the hill and there was no one else there. I went to check and one of the kitchen window frames with the glass inside it had fallen out of the window and knocked down the coffee machine on the floor and broken the glass pot. It was strange because there was no one there when it happened and no one had touched that particular window before it happened. It wasn't nailed shut or anything so that you can take out the window during the summer when it's hot. But no one had touched it that weekend. So it made us wonder whether it was a sign from our dog that this isn't where he wanted to be buried. I don't know. Maybe there's some rational explanation I just haven't figured out of why the window would just suddenly fall out on its own. Either way, thank you for watching and see you next week.